I'm sorry, Henry. Are you home yet? I have work left to do, so I have to go overtime today. My boss asked me to finish doing the calculations. I won't get home until past 10. I've already made some food and it's in the fridge. You can go ahead and eat first. Um, same here. I'm also going to be home late today. You'll probably get home before I do. You have to work overtime too? For goodness sake. You've been doing that a lot recently. Yeah, that's right. I've been busy lately. What do you want me to do? Just do what you have to do. Nothing I say can change that. But really, you have been coming home late and I'm worried. You have to go drink with the business partners again? What do you mean, again? You didn't notice? Lately, you've been coming home smelling like alcohol. I was just caught up with something at the end of work. You do the same. It's not a big deal, right? Remember the health screening you did last month? The doctor warned you against drinking too much. I just thought you should be a bit more careful. I don't want you to end up with an alcohol problem like my father has. The doctor is over-exaggerating. It's fine. And I wasn't drinking too much. I have to entertain the guests at the party so they will be more willing to sign the contract. Anyway, speaking of drinking and eating, don't you think you have been making the same meals over and over again lately? It's the reason that I've been eating out so much lately. I'm so sick of eating the same things over and over again. That's what you're thinking? I was just thinking about your health when making them. I wish you were more appreciative of what I do for you. You were thinking about my health? Really? Did you look at them all? Almost everything was brown. Brown meat, brown vegetables, brown soup. You are just thinking of turning everything into a stew and it will be good and healthy. Why can't you be a little bit more creative? All of your food tastes like they were made by an old grandma. I think you should do a little more research on cooking. Maybe take some cooking lessons. If you have a problem with my cooking, then you should learn how to cook and make your own food. That's your job, isn't it? That's the reason why I have been eating out. At least the food outside is more colorful. Oh yeah, by the way, not only did your food taste like it was made by an old grandma, they also looked like they were made by an old grandma. <laughs> hey, stop with the old grandma this and old grandma that. You do know that you are the same age as me, right? Doesn't that make you an old grandpa? We're the same here. Don't just talk about me. Well, actually, unlike you, I've been taking care of my appearance. I even put on this new cologne I've bought. And my hair is always in good shape. I scream stunning from head to toe. On the other hand, you always just tie your hair up and wear the same suit every day. You don't think there is any problem with it? Aren't the younger ones in the company making fun of you? Well, I've been keeping myself clean and tidy. You don't understand, do you? Being out of fashion is the problem here. And you're middle-aged already, so there is a distinctive odor that comes with age. You don't smell it. Why don't you take care of that and get yourself some beauty treatments along with it? Maybe you can learn from the young girls at your work. It's funny that you're saying this. Do you remember what you said the last time when I bought cosmetics? You said that there is nothing an ugly person can do to make herself look good. Now you're telling me to clean myself up? Oh, right. I said that. <laughs> well, what I said is true, though. I'll be honest with you. Now is a good time for you to start looking into things like these. Put on a new dress, wear some perfume, get a new hairstyle. You're an old grandma, not in your 20s anymore. You need to take more care of yourself. Oh yeah? Is that right? Well, at least you still have a job. That's like the only merit you have. But thinking about the future, you should really study up on beauty and fashion. Especially now that you are done with raising our kid. You got more time to enjoy yourself. Use that time effectively is what I'm saying. I'm done with child raising, but we still have the home loan to pay off. 
Why are you worrying about it so much? There's only a little left to pay off, right? I'll start thinking about myself and how to use my own time effectively when we have completely finished paying it off. I think by then it will be too late. Why do you think so? Well, I just thought it will turn out that way. You know, with you being you. <laughs> anyway, that's all the advice from me. Take it or leave it. I'm probably going to catch the last bus home. No need to wait for me. You bet I won't. What? Are you upset that I called you old? That's enough. Stop calling me that. You see what I mean? Saying something like that is not cute at all. You're old, but at least have charm like an actual woman. That's why I don't want to go home. Hey, Henry. Where did you go? Can you come home? Like, right now? Uh, no. You're off work today. You're just out playing around, right? Get back home now. It's my day off. What's wrong with going out? I can't just go home now. Fine. Then I'll ask you here and now. You took out our savings, didn't you? Oops, you found out. <laughs> Are you joking with me? You took out almost $15,000 in the past few months. What exactly are you thinking? Are you out of your mind? Where did the money go? Big deal. I just have things I need to pay for. You know, now that I'm at my age, there are things I must do. There are things I need to get to make myself look good. Cologne, new shoes, new ties, and this watch that's on my wrist right now. So you're saying you've been wasting the money on shopping for clothes and watches? Don't call it a waste. They are a necessity. A necessity? Are you hearing yourself? That money is for both of us after retirement. If you keep doing things like this, we will not end up saving any money. What are we going to do? There is still money left in the account, so it's okay, isn't it? I'm saying it's not okay. You need to think more about the future. I've been holding off on buying the things I want. I was saving up little by little. And in the end, I was the one who paid off most of the loan. I did a billion calculations on how we can save up more, while you, on the other hand, just spent the money however you like. You think that's fair? Hey, I've been helping out too. Some of my paycheck went to the loan. Not enough. You've been changing your jobs ever since we got married. You never really got a rise in your paychecks. Who is the person you think that has been supporting you this whole time? Me! Well, I supported you when you were pregnant. You don't remember that. Of course you have to. I'm pregnant with your kid. It's your responsibility too. And I went back to work immediately after I gave birth to Chris. You didn't really help me during child raising. And I paid for all of his school fees. I bought all of his clothes, his school supplies, and that summer camp he went to in high school. It's not a big deal, right? Chris turned out fine and healthy. Don't complain about what happened in the past. What's done is done. Who do you think is making me say all this? I'm saying that you need to stop thinking only about yourself and more about our family. Then how about you use the same amount of money that I've used from the savings? I wouldn't mind you doing that. Then it will be fair and you will have no complaints, right? That's not the problem here. I'm saying that you can't just spend money like it's nothing. Can we argue about this another time? I'm busy doing things right now. I don't have time to listen to an old grandma yapping at me. Okay, then we'll talk it out when you come back. Wow, and you think saying that makes me want to go back? If anything, we'll finish paying off the loan next month. I just have to make the same amount that I've spent. Then you don't have a problem anymore, right? Don't make it sound so easy. You're not getting a raise soon. 
and the amount you took out is a lot. You know what? Let's do this. I'll make time to talk things through next month. Why next month? Let's do it today. Because I got things to do this month. So we'll do next month. I promise to make time for you. You can yell at me then. I'm not really understanding this. Why can't we do it today? There are only a couple of weeks until next month. You can wait, right? And I don't feel like talking to you right now when you are not calm. I want to give you time to think things over before we talk. I won't forgive you even if you give me time to think. What you did is unforgivable. Like I said, let's not talk about this until next month. Or else I won't talk about it at all. Your choice. Fine. We'll definitely have to talk about it next month, alright? Don't you avoid it again. I'm holding this against you. Hey, Henry. Where did you go? Can you come home? Like, right now? Uh, no. You're off work today. You're just out playing around, right? Get back home now. It's my day off. What's wrong with going out? I can't just go home now. Fine. Then I'll ask you here and now. You took out our savings, didn't you? Oops. You found out. <laughs> Are you joking with me? You took out almost $15,000 in the past few months. What exactly are you thinking? Are you out of your mind? Where did the money go? Big deal. I just have things I need to pay for. You know, now that I'm at my age, there are things I must do. There are things I need to get to make myself look good. Cologne, new shoes, new ties, and this watch that's on my wrist right now. So you're saying you've been wasting the money on shopping for clothes and watches? Don't call it a waste. They are a necessity. A necessity? Are you hearing yourself? That money is for both of us after retirement. If you keep doing things like this, we will not end up saving any money. What are we going to do? There is still money left in the account, so it's okay, isn't it? I'm saying it's not okay. You need to think more about the future. I've been holding off on buying the things I want. I was saving up little by little. And in the end, I was the one who paid off most of the loan. I did a billion calculations on how we can save up more, while you, on the other hand, just spent the money however you like. You think that's fair? Hey, I've been helping out too. Some of my paycheck went to the loan. Not enough. You've been changing your jobs ever since we got married. You never really got a rise in your paychecks. Who is the person you think that has been supporting you this whole time? Me! Well, I supported you when you were pregnant. You don't remember that. Of course you have to. I'm pregnant with your kid. It's your responsibility too. And I went back to work immediately after I gave birth to Chris. You didn't really help me during child raising. And I paid for all of his school fees. I bought all of his clothes, his school supplies, and that summer camp he went to in high school. It's not a big deal, right? Chris turned out fine and healthy. Don't complain about what happened in the past. What's done is done. Who do you think is making me say all this? I'm saying that you need to stop thinking only about yourself and more about our family. Then how about you use the same amount of money that I've used from the savings? I wouldn't mind you doing that. Then it will be fair and you will have no complaints, right? That's not the problem here. I'm saying that you can't just spend money like it's nothing. Can we argue about this another time? I'm busy doing things right now. I don't have time to listen to an old grandma yapping at me. Okay, then we'll talk it out when you come back. Wow, and you think saying that makes me want to go back? If anything, we'll finish paying off the loan next month. I just have to make the same amount that I've spent. 
Then you don't have a problem anymore, right? Don't make it sound so easy. You're not getting a raise soon, and the amount you took out is a lot. You know what? Let's do this. I'll make time to talk things through next month. Why next month? Let's do it today. Because I got things to do this month. So we'll do next month. I promise to make time for you. You can yell at me then. I'm not really understanding this. Why can't we do it today? There are only a couple of weeks until next month. You can wait, right? And I don't feel like talking to you right now when you are not calm. I want to give you time to think things over before we talk. I won't forgive you even if you give me time to think. What you did is unforgivable. Like I said, let's not talk about this until next month. Or else I won't talk about it at all. Your choice. Fine. We'll definitely have to talk about it next month, alright? Don't you avoid it again. I'm holding this against you. Hey, Samantha. Did you get home already? I just got back. Why do you ask? I have a surprise for you. Take a look on the table. What are these? I'm looking at divorce papers. Oh good, you found them. Thank you for everything until now. I have no use of you anymore. Now that we're done with raising Chris and paying back the loan, you can go now. <laughs> That's why you said you wanted to wait a month before we talk things over, huh? Yep, you got it. I have no need to spend time with an old grandma like you anymore. From now on, I'm free to do whatever and live however I like. It's time to get a divorce and start my next stage in life. And do me a favor, turn in the divorce papers after you sign them, okay? Oh, really? Thank you. I'll turn them in immediately. And I'll be throwing out all the stuff, too. Huh? Throw out what stuff? Yeah, I'm throwing out your stuff. Your cologne, your shoes, your clothes, and your guitar. It's been gathering dust for years anyway. I don't think you'll need it anymore. Since the house is under my name, your things are no longer wanted here. Excuse me. You're the one leaving, right? It's my house. You don't remember? When we were going to buy the house, you quit your job. We almost couldn't get a loan. It was because I was working at that time that we were able to get one. What makes you think you deserve the house? But I'm the homeowner. Are you talking about being the man of the house? Not like you've done anything to act like one. And that's different from who actually owns the house. You don't even understand the difference? You're really stupid. Wait, then whose house is it? Like I said, it's my house. It's under my name. How could you say that? I paid back the loan too. But I paid for pretty much all of it. Well, if the house is not going to be mine, then we'll sell it and split the money. Oh, so you actually know that you can do that, huh? Not too stupid after all. It's fine with me. Let's sell the house. Now that I think about it, you are not even a bit surprised when I told you I want a divorce. What? You want me to make a fuss or something? No, this is better for me anyway. I won't be able to stand it if you cry or make a scene. Perfect! I was thinking of getting a divorce too, so what good timing. I know you are having an affair with this girl from your company. What? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't have to pretend anymore. I found out everything. You were looking suspicious, so I did some research. I brought the matter to a detective agency, and boy, they were good at their jobs. You spent our savings on that girl, didn't you? I have evidence. Lots and lots of pictures and videos of you guys at the hotel and at her house. There are enough for me to sue you and your cheating partner. It will get me a pretty good compensation. I'll have to thank you for that. Hold on a sec. 
You're suing her too? Why wouldn't I do it? She has an affair with a married man. I'll sue her for the source of emotional damage. Don't do that. I don't want her to be bothered by this. This is just between us. No need to drag her into this. You are serious about her, aren't you? Of course I am. I love her with my whole heart. You're nothing compared to her. Oh yeah? I'm also thinking of telling your company about this affair of yours. This is just about us. It has nothing to do with the company. There's no need for you to tell them. Of course it has something to do with them. You went to the hotel during working hours, right? And also that so-called business trip last month. There is a possibility that we might get sued by your company if I tell them only about your affair. But this is during work. I'm sure your boss would love to hear about this. I have exciting stories to tell. Hang on. Don't make any impulsive decisions. Think it over again. Please. She is still young and has a life in front of her, and it would cause trouble for me if you tell my boss. I was finally able to get a long-term job there. This will hurt my image. What would my co-workers think of me? As if I care. But if you don't want me to tell on you, then you have to show me how serious you are about it. I see what this is about. What do you want? I want money, of course. And the house goes to me. I never knew you were such a greedy person. I don't care what you call me. I paid back most of the loan anyway, so I deserve the house. Fine. Whatever. It's yours. Take it. But I need you to write up a contract about this. I have to make sure you're not going back on your words. I was thinking of writing one up, too. It would be troublesome for me if you say you want the house back afterwards. Saves me the trouble. Okay. I'll hand in the divorce paper soon. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. From now on, let's live as if we don't know each other. Starting today, we're strangers. You see, you are not lovable even in the end. That's why you're getting dumped at this old age. You are not worth anything. You should realize it by now. Goodbye. Hey, Samantha, dear. Can we meet? I want to talk. Why? And don't call me dear. We're done with all the paperwork. And all the money matter is taken care of. There's no need to see each other anymore. Please, I really need to talk to you. Did you forget already? We're divorced. We're strangers. And most importantly, I don't want to talk to you. Goodbye. Please. It's important. I'll make it quick. I don't have time to meet with you. If you want to talk, do it now. I don't want to see you. Well, I'm thinking that we should make up. Like, be a family again. Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> are you insane? No way we are getting back together. Just hear me out. I finally understand. You're very important to me. I can't live without you. Oh, uh, I see. I know what's going on. You were dumped by that girl. No, I dumped her. I just can't keep up with those young girls. They're naive and weak. I need a mature and sophisticated partner. Like you. So what I'm hearing is, she dumped you. I was right. I thought eventually it would happen. She would run away as soon as you get a divorce. Do you know that girl has an actual boyfriend? What? He's in the sales department in your company. He's young and handsome. A perfect gentleman. When I asked the detective agency to investigate you, I had them investigate the girl and her surroundings too. And I found out that she went out with you because you've been spending money on her. 
but I found it incredible that she's willing to sleep with you just for purses and necklaces. She's pretty, but definitely not thinking straight. What are you talking about? I'm being kind and telling you the reason that you're dumped. That girl was never serious about you in the first place. She only wanted your money. Although you left me for her, it doesn't seem like she likes you that much. How does it feel not having your feelings returned? And if you really think about it, why would a girl in her 20s want to go out with an old guy like you with no money? You have never for once doubted her? But I take care of my appearance. I'm as good as those other younger men. I'm more mature. I suggest you take a good look into the mirror. Or go to an eye doctor to get a checkup. You're just a regular old man in your 40s. Nothing more, nothing less. You keep telling me about your cologne and your hair and your shoes. But let me tell you something. That cologne doesn't cover that odor that's emitting from your body. I'm sure that your co-workers were complaining about this in your company as well. You were lying. That's not true. Someone recommended me that cologne. And my co-workers complimented me on it. Are you sure they're not just being nice? The main problem is the amount you put on. It's better if you don't wear that cologne anymore in the company. It's just an advice from someone who had to live with it for the past few years. I believe people called this fragrance pollution. That's enough. I don't want to hear it anymore. Well, I guess I'm not putting on that anymore. Thank goodness. But back to what I was saying. It would be great if we can get back together again. And I'm saying in your dreams. Why would I do that? Look, I admit that I was stupid. I was deceived by a young, attractive girl. And left you, who was always there supporting me. I really did a terrible thing. I want to apologize. Please forgive me. So you finally understood what a dirtbag you are? But let's get one thing straight. You weren't deceived. You had an affair because you had a weak mind and gave in to your own desires. You got hyped up because you were able to go out with a beautiful young girl. Don't pretend to be the victim here. I'm sorry, but I beg you. Give me one more chance. I won't do it again. Remember how we've supported each other for over 20 years? You stayed by my side even though you knew that I'm good for nothing, right? You loved me for real, right? Don't say stupid things. I didn't leave you because I had a child to raise. I was already thinking of getting a divorce once everything has settled down. Now that Chris is all grown up and in college, it's time. You're saying you didn't love me? You stayed with me just for Chris? I have to admit... I liked you when we first met. That's why I married you in the first place, despite my parents' opposition. I should have listened to them. I thought you can change for the better, but I was wrong. You got worse as time went by. So my love for you decreased over time, too. And now there is nothing left. You're the one at fault. Samantha, I'm really sorry. Please. I beg for your forgiveness. I won't hurt you again. I promise. How can you still say that after all you've done? I will never forgive you. In any case, I'm very happy with my life right now. Because after the divorce, I don't have to spend my time with a stinky old man anymore. You're not worth anything. You are the one who should be realizing it. Does this sound familiar? My husband called and texted a couple more times after that. Eventually, he realized that nothing will change my mind, so he stopped. One day at work, he suddenly started yelling at the girl he cheated with and her boyfriend. The company found out about the affair, and the girl's boyfriend was infuriated. It seems like he was deceived by the girl, too. I heard from my friend in my husband's company that the girl was dumped by her boyfriend. She cried and cried. But he didn't change his mind. 
And then the girl quit her job because of her relationship with my husband was found out by everyone else. She couldn't stand the pointing fingers anymore. My husband still works in the same company, but it looks like everyone around is giving him cold shoulders. Nobody wants anything to do with him. Understandable. I didn't ask the girl for compensation, but she lost her social stance and her lover because of my husband. I guess she got what she deserved. I got a large sum of money and a house, so I was very satisfied with the divorce. I have no regrets. And it took time, but my son accepted our divorce. He was quite shocked about his father's affair. Poor boy. It might take him some time to recover. He often comes home to see me and check if I'm grieving over the divorce. Of course I wasn't. It's sad when the love between a husband and wife turns into hatred. But I was blessed with a kind and gentle son. I love him dearly. It's the one thing I still thank my ex-husband for. Of course, there are so many things I want to complain about, like child raising and him using up our savings. But if I had never met my ex-husband, then my son would have never been born, and all those happy memories will be gone. So I don't regret getting married. I am able to think positively like this because I'm finally free and my ex-husband can never hurt me again. A divorce might look bad in other people's eyes, but I think I can turn it into a good thing. I'm happy now, more than ever. I don't have much time left in my life, but I want to enjoy the rest of my new life to the fullest.